The Kanu state government says it has begun an investigation into claims that there was a surge in debts in Kanu metropolis. Dr. Tijani Husseini, Executive Secretary, Kanu State Primary Health Care Board, said that medics were yet to ascertain the medical cause of the said debt, but acknowledged that the situation had sent residents panicking. The investigation is prompted by reports that more deaths have been recorded in the past seven days. Hosseini, who did not state the number of deaths so far recorded, said the investigation was focusing on the symptoms exhibited by the victims before they died. Also, the Commissioner for Health, Dr. Aminu Sayawa, said the ministry had embarked on clinical investigation to unravel the course of the said deaths in Kanu. Joining us via Skype from Kanu is Professor Issa Sadiq Abubakar, who is the head of research center Aminu Kanu Teaching Hospital. Good to have you with us today. Uh, good morning. Good morning. What is the situation in Kanu from your perspective? Well, um, in Kanu, a lot is happening. Uh, we know that since we started detecting the first case of COVID-19 in Kanu, the number keeps increasing from one, and within days, we are now at 73 confirmed cases as reported by the Centers for Disease Control in Nigeria, as well as the Kano State Ministry of Health. Well, this shows that uh, a lot is happening in the area of spread. A lot is happening in the area of control and containment. The state task force is going on making contact tracing and trying to identify cases, taking them to isolation centers so as to separate them from the remaining people. And then we had a lot of rumors emanating from different quarters. Many of them are unfounded, but then some of them call for investigation. I'm glad that the State Ministry of Health has come out to own up and that it has set the machineries for investigating such rumors because we cannot just uh, sweep them under the carpet. They affect human lives and if not handled properly, they may escalate and cause a lot of panic and other repercussions may come out as a result of that. Okay, what is the um, perception among um, your circles, uh, medical experts, there could be the cause of these uh, on, on unexpected deaths in the States? Well, there are a lot of explanations one can give. Ordinarily speaking, from scientific point of view, you do not just conclude that something has risen unless you have a baseline. Let me just say at this point that our birth and death registration system is not perfect, so we do not have a complete record of the number of days over the past few weeks. So it will be a bit difficult from scientific point of view to convince anyone that there has been a rise. However, a subjective assessment could conclude that, yes, there may be a rise, and that calls for investigation. And so the correct thing to do is first to establish a baseline and follow it up over some few weeks or months to confirm that there is a rise. But while that is ongoing, we should also take measures aimed at determining the deaths that are occurring now, trying to establish the people that are affected, why are they dying, and if possible, take some samples from the dead bodies and draw conclusion. Now, let's assume that the deaths are happening and there is a rise in the number of deaths. 
Uh, a lot of things could have happened. Um, number one is the possibility of the people dying from other illnesses. There are a lot of chronic debilitating illnesses for which people need the health sector to address them. Uh, for example, people with cancers, people with diabetes that is not controlled, people with chronic kidney diseases that need health care, sicklers, those with other malignancies in the blood and other parts of the body. These are people who probably need care. But the health, the complete health sector, the attention is being shifted to COVID-19, and these people are not getting the help they need from hospitals. Some of them will definitely suffer, and among them, some will lose their lives, unfortunately. Secondly, we shouldn't forget about the fact that around this time, we used to encounter the epidemics of diseases like meningitis, though it is not obvious yet, because we are not getting symptoms suggestive of those diseases, but it is something that we can also not sweep under the carpet. We need to investigate that along the line. And thirdly, then there is the possibility that COVID-19 might be contributing because uh, it is not everybody that is taking responsibility as we are expected. Everybody who is having symptoms, especially those with travel history to areas where these diseases have been reported, at least they are expected to report themselves to health authorities. They should come to hospitals. They should call some lines that were given uh, to report themselves so that rapid response team workers will come and interview them, ascertain whether or not they have symptoms suggestive of COVID-19, COVID and then their samples may be taken and the results, if showing positive, they will be taken to the treatment center and be given the necessary treatment. And by so doing, you are helping the community at large to get rid of the COVID-19 disease. Let me, let, me, let me ask you, let me interject and ask you about the testing capacity and how aware the government is there of these other cases, medical cases, that are also very, very important and needs attention. First, what is the testing capacity of the state uh, when it comes to COVID-19? And how aware do you think the government is of all of these other cases that are being relegated to the background as a result of all the focus on COVID-19? Well, it's not anybody's fault that these diseases have been relegated as, let me use your own word, it is the situation across the world. Because of the pandemic, the health sector has shifted most of its attention to COVID-19, to the neglect of those other diseases. It is an unusual situation, and we cannot do without doing that. I mean, we cannot do without that. It is a situation we found ourselves compelled by circumstances, not a deliberate one. Now, concerning government awareness, I'm sure the government is on top of the situation because though I do not work with the state government, I am a staff of a federal institution within Kano State. I know that they have competent hands in the state health sector to advise them and in the task force on fighting COVID-19, we are working together, all federal establishments in the health sector, working with the state and even local governments and other partners. So we discuss some of these things and recommendations are being passed on to the government through the chairman of the task force, who is the deputy governor of the state. And I'm sure they are aware of that. And I know that privileged information has it that the State Ministry of Health has already started the investigation. They have conducted a baseline looking at deaths that have occurred over the last one week from up to day before yesterday, so that that will form the baseline. 
Now, having done that, the way forward is for them to now start counting, and they have started counting the number of deaths, trying to establish their characteristics Okay, because we have who very have died limited time, and from I, what I will interject again to ask quickly, um, how aware are the people? Because we know the precarious kind of um, uh, scenario that we have in Kanu, the family units, uh, the, the, the human need to, uh, you know, mingle is very high in that area as well. How aware are the people about the importance um, of social distancing. Yeah, it's, yeah, you see, a lot is going out there from the media, social media, and the normal uh, media. We have print, electronic, and so a lot is going on. Most of the TV stations, most of the radio stations have stopped normal programs. What they, all they are doing is program on COVID-19, and it is going into different areas of the state. However, when you go into town and into different areas, you may find out non-compliance with most of the things that are being said in different parts of the state. Although not global, but you find a significant number of areas that are not adhering to the, what health workers are saying. So this is not lack of awareness, but that of more of an attitudinal issue. A good number of people are still believing that this disease is not real, this disease is not dangerous, it doesn't require the amount of attention that it is getting, and that is why you still find youths going to gather in football pitches organizing competitions, you find, you hardly find people around their houses, inside the house. They are still coming out for neighbors to sit down and chat in groups. So the issue of social distancing and lockdown are not completely being adhered to. So quickly, but what can the government do? do? What, what can be done to create more awareness and not let them understand? You said it's not primarily a situation of not being aware, but perception and belief system. So how can that be, you know, adjusted at this crucial time so we can um, have to uh, save more people? Yeah, I, well, a lot is going on by health workers and some prominent people. I think the, maybe what is missing is for influential people within smaller communities to be brought on, book, um, on board now. Maybe, well, there is no room now for mass gathering, but at least through telephone calls to specific individuals within smaller communities so that they take the fight by educating their people in smaller numbers, maybe door-to-door -door campaigns can do a lot in every smaller communities. I think that may go a long way in changing the narrative. Professor Issa is now... thank you very much. I'm afraid that's yeah. all time can allow us. Thank you so much for your thoughts. It's appreciated. Thank you very much.